Well, welcome back to our course, Writing 242 Technical Communication. We're continuing to progress through our section number four. And this is where we're talking about drafting, designing, and revising. So we're getting uh, actively involved in the writing process. We went through the organizing and drafting phase last time. And now we're going to be talking about using plain or persuasive style. This is where we need to be thinking about who is the audience, what is the purpose of the document. Some, some documents need to be more persuasive because it needs a decision. Others, it's more inform informative. And so we need to be clearly aware of what that is going to be used for. So in this chapter, we will learn to recognize the difference between plain and persuasive style. So um, maybe this is something you haven't thought about, but you need to be thinking about your audience and how this document is going to be used. And in our focus for this course is thinking in terms of a technical communication audience. We'll use eight um, techniques for writing clearly and plainly. We'll write paragraphs that support claims and flow smoothly. And finally, we'll figure out when passive, the passive voice is appropriate. A lot of times when you're using um, spell checkers or, or grammar um, feedback, it will make want to have you avoid using the passive voice. So we'll use elements of, of persuasive styles, including tone, similes, analogies, metaphors, and pace. We'll consider the balance um, between plain and persuasive style, and we use um, translation programs for transcultural documents. You may end up having to translate it directly into other languages, and you'll probably have to have some help to making sure that it still conveys the same type of a meaning. Okay, what is style? And so here we want to recognize the difference between plain and persuasive style in technical communication. Um, you don't want to have a persuasive document when you're talking about a spec for, for something. Your document style expresses your attitude towards a subject. Good style involves choosing the right words and phrases, structuring sentences and paragraphs for clarity, using an appropriate tone, and adding a visual sense to the text. So um, if you had a specification that's going to be fairly dry, but it's for a, a very specific purpose, you're trying to write a, a motivational um, summary of a product and, and show how it's going to be useful to the end customer, having a more persuasive style would be more appropriate. So there's three levels of style. So it, we can be thinking of a plain style. So it stresses clear wording and simple prose. Um, you can have a persuasive style um, that used to influence people to accept ideas and to take action. And finally, a grand style that stresses the eloquence. And so this is, um, you have a higher level kind of writing, if you will, or what you're trying to do and communicate to the audience. So what about writing plain sentences? And so we'll use um, a handful of techniques for writing clearly and plainly. And so what are the basic parts of a sentence? You, um, you have the subject of the, the verb and the complement. So we can be thinking about those. The subject is what the sentence is about. The verb is what the, the subject is doing, and the comment is what is being said about the, the subject. So here are the eight guidelines for plain sentences. And so first, the subject of the sentence should be what the sentence is about. So make sure that it's clearly done. The subject should, should be the doer in the sentence. And so they're going to take some type of action as a result of what you're trying to do in this sentence. The verb should state what the doer is doing. Um, the subject of the sentence should come early. Okay, um, that's going to be important. You want to eliminate um, nominalizations. And so nominalizations are verbs and adjectives that have been turned into awkward nouns. So avoid that. Avoid excessive uh, pre prepositional phrases. You want to be uh, eliminating redundancy in sentences and write sentences that are, that are breathing lengths. 
So make them, if something gets too long, you want to be breaking it up into multiple sentences. So these are the, the general guidelines that we want to be using as we're writing um, and we're thinking here, was thinking in terms of the sentence. So the next level would be thinking in terms of writing plain paragraphs, the elements of a paragraph or a transitional sentence, where and how did you get from this paragraph from what you were talking about earlier? The first sentence is the introduction. Then you have supporting sentences, and then you have the point sentence. So you have the introduction, the body, and the closing, similar to what we've had before. And each has its, its key points. You, so you start with a transition, then you do the introduction, the body, and the closing, and the point sentence, which can be a way of starting to tie to what you'll talk about next. Only the topic and support sentences are, are needed, um, but you need to have that as a, as a minimum. You can align a sentence subjects in a paragraph and use the, the given slash new method um, for, for what you're trying to accomplish with, with this. And so um, the the, the given new method, this method suggests that every sentence in a paragraph should contain something the reader already knows and something they don't. And so you start with something that they know and you add something to it. So when is it appropriate to, to use a passive voice? Some would say never. Um, a passive voice is when the subject of the sentence is being acted upon. So the passive voice is acceptable if the reader um, Readers don't need to know who or what is doing something in the sentence. The subject of the sentence is what the sentence is, is about. So those are some po possible things that you can be considering. Persuasive style can add emphasis, energy, color, and emotion to your writing. So um, if there are four persuasive techniques. You can elevate the tone. Um, you can use similes and analogies, you can use metaphors, and you can change the, the pace. And so how can you start to, to use more color in your language to help them to tie in maybe with more senses, if you will, if they can start to emotionally connect um, or more have more concrete evidence of why this is going to make sense. And so changing the pace a little bit can be a way for them to, to tie into this other area for persuasion. So this is um, assuming that what you're writing about is that it needs to be persuasive at all. So let's talk about balancing plain and persuasive style. Sentences should be clear and easy to read. Persuasive style should be used to add energy and color. So that is assuming that there needs to be energy and color added to what you're creating. The use of tones, similes, analogies, and metaphors in strategic places should encourage readers to do what you want. Okay, um, what about translating um, and translation programs? Um, when would you be using um, translation software? Um, you can use basic sentences, um, standard punctuation, use consistent words. So these are the strategies you want to be doing for what's going to go into a translation program. You want to use consistent words, avoid metaphor sayings and cliches, things that are really tough to go from one language to another, and remove any cultural, historical, or sports-related references. So basically, this is going to make a lot cleaner way to um, do the translation as you're trying to think of a multicultural way of how your information could be used. Um, after you've done the translation, one of the ways to double check is to back translate all the text. And so then you can see um, how well did it do? Um, was there something there that was unintended? You want to be using the spell checker on the original and the translated text. And then avoid wording that have double meanings. That's going to make it um, more um, ambiguous, and you want to avoid that. Minimize jargon and avoid acronyms. And finally, avoid puns or other plays on words. Okay, well, that's it for, for this um, chapter. Thank you very much.